The turning points of a polynomial function are the points where the function changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So we want to be able to identify the turning points on a graph, but also know how many turning points we may have. If we continue with this definition, it says the turning points correspond to the points where the function has a relative maxima or relative minima. So before we talk about the maximum number of turning points, let's just draw a couple of graphs. So let's say we wanted to draw a polynomial function that has one maximum and one ma minimum. So this has a local maximum here. That's also called a relative maximum, and it has a local minimum or relative minimum here. And you'll notice that these are both points where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So this is a good example of a graph that has two turning points. I'll just abbreviate that TP for turning points. Another example would be a function that is increasing and then changes to decreasing and then changes to increasing again and then one more time changes to decreasing. So let's say this is what our polynomial function looks like. So we have a maximum, a local maximum here, a local minimum, and then another local maximum here. So this is an example of a graph that has three turning points. And of course, you could also have functions that are linear. For example, a function like this. We know linear functions are lines. This function is always increasing, so this doesn't have any turning points. So now that we know what a turning point is, let's talk about the maximum number of turning points. Let's go back and look at the graphs we have created so far, and let's talk about their degree. If we look at the first graph, we can see that the ends are pointing in opposite directions. We know this would be an odd degree polynomial, and this might be a good example of a polynomial that is degree three, let's say. So that's degree three, but it has two turning points. The next polynomial, the ends are both pointing in the same direction, so we would expect this to have an even, an even degree, and this one is a good example of a polynomial that could have been, let's say, degree four. So notice it's degree four, but it only has three turning points. So it, it appears right now that the number of turning points, if we compare to the degree, if the degree is three, this example had two turning points. If the degree is four, then this example had three turning points. It looks like the number of turning points is one less than the degree. Let's think about that a little bit more. If I tried to graph a polynomial that had let's say four turning points. So let's say the polynomial increases and then decreases, increases. So there's our third turning point. Here's our fourth. So there's four turning points. One, two, three, four. Notice what happened to our end behavior. Now the left side is falling and the right side is rising. So this is no longer a degree four polynomial. This would have to be an odd degree polynomial. So this would be possibly, let's say degree, degree five, and it has four turning points. So that appears to follow what we said earlier that the number of turning points is one less than the degree. So the graph of a polynomial that has a degree of n would then have at most n minus one turning points. But before we move on, let's make sure we discuss this phrase right here, at most n minus one turning points, because it doesn't have to have n minus one turning points. That would be the most it could possibly have. And the reason for this, if you look back at your degree three graph, the very first one that we graphed, we know that the first polynomial we ever studied was the basic parent function y equals x cubed, which is certainly a degree three polynomial. But if you recall the graph of y equals x cubed, it's an increasing function the entire time. It has no turning points. It doesn't have any maximum or minimum points. So this is a great example showing that just because the function is degree three, it doesn't mean that it automatically has two turning points. It means it could have at most two turning points. Let's look at one more example just to make sure this is really clear. Our second graph was degree four and it had three turning points. However, you could have a basic power function, which is y equals x to the fourth, 
that is also a degree four polynomial. But if you were to look at the graph of y equals x to the fourth, it has just a U shape. So notice that the graph decreases and then increases, meaning it only has one turning point. So again, just because it's degree four doesn't mean it has to have three turning points. It means that the graph will have at most three turning points. So back to our definition, the maximum number of possible turning points, if it's degree n, will be n minus one.